you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give before this court and jury to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God. Your voice is very soft, so mm -hmm. can you pull that through that microphone? Yes. The audio will go out, but we have okay. instructed them no song. Okay. 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 Good morning. I'm over here. <laughs> Um, could you tell everybody your name? Could you spell your first name and your last name for me? Um, my first name is um, Alicia. That's A-L-I-C-I-A. -I Napier, N-A-P-I-E-R. And without telling us exactly where you work, Ms. Napier, could you tell us your occupation? I'm a teacher. And could you tell the jury in your own words what type of things you would do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, I um, feed kids, change them. Um, basically be like a second mom when, they're, when their parents are, you know, at work or wherever, taking care of business and stuff. Would it be like a, in the daycare business, is that the business you'd be in? Yes. What, what are the approximate ages of the children that you work with? Um, I work with ages six weeks to like maybe up to a year. So the very, very young kids? Yeah, they're real young. And how long have you been with the company that you're with now? Um, I've been with them for a year and five months. Do you enjoy what you do? Yes. I'm going to direct your attention to July 19th of 2015, uh, almost a couple of years ago now. Um, the late afternoon, early evening of that day. Do you recall where you were, Ms. Napier? Um, I, were, um, I was getting my kids situated in my car. And after I got them situated, I sat and got myself, you know, buckled in, ready to take Let off. Let me stop you just for a sec. Um, were you, like, out or near the corner of Phil and Rice Streets? Yes. And is, is there somebody that lives right on the corner that you um, that you know? Yes. Who is that? That's um, my boyfriend's mom, mother-in-law. I call her my mother-in-law. Okay. And which house does she live in? Um, she lives on 23 Teal Street. Is that, that right on the corner when um, Phil comes up and it makes a sharp like right turn up to Rice Street? Yes. And she's the house on that exact corner? Yes. Does she have a couple of dogs? Yeah. And kind of bark and all that? Yeah. Okay. Kind of a nicer garden in the front? Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned that you were with your children? Yes. And, and again, I know this is two years down the road, but how old are they now, Ms. Napier? Um, my daughter, she's five, and my son is two. And do you recall approximately how old they would have been back in July of 2015? My son was like six, about six months, and my daughter was four. And had you been staying or living at um, the corner of Phil and Rice in that residence for a while? Yeah, I've been there for at least maybe seven months. And did you, how did you get to that area that day, Ms. Napier? Did you uh, drive? Yes, I drive. Do you remember what kind of car you had back then? Um, I had an Impala, 2008 Impala. And where did you park? Um, I parked somewhere f like further up from my uh, mother-in-law's driveway. Um, I'll say maybe probably about a couple, f maybe a couple feet from her driveway. And was there a reason that you parked a little further up from her driveway than just um? Right by her driveway? Um, my boyfriend, like when he gets off of work and stuff, he likes to park behind me, so kind of scoot up a little bit. So you left a little space between the driveway and the street for him to park? Yes. Ms. Napier, I'm going to show you what's been marked States Exhibit 1B. Do you recognize that? Is that a, looks like an, an online map of the area that we just talked about? Yes. Judge, I'd like to admit and display 1B. Mr. Matthew? No objection. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. And if just to um, orient ourselves to that area, And I'll use my pen if you're um, coming up Phil from Vine Street with Phil run off Vine. We're going down the hill on Vine, like from Clifton down to downtown. Mm -hmm. 
and you'd make a left on fill. Is that fair to say? Mm -hmm. Then you'd come up fill, and then rice fill would dead end into rice, and rice rice comes up this way. Mm -hmm. And then your I'll call mother-in-law lived right in this corner house right here. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. And to get to the point that you were um, talking about before I interrupted you, at around 6.30 or so that evening on July 19th, were you um, leaving that residence? Yes. And did you go to your car? Yes. And where were your kids located um, in the car, Ms. Napier? Um, they were in the back, back seat. Could you uh, let the jury know in your own words how they were um, fastened or put in the seats? Um, my son was rear facing and my daughter was um, in her car seat or her booster chair. Those are regulations that kids have to do in order to travel safely in the car. Mm -hmm. Your son, you said, was rear facing? Yes. And did it take you a little bit to um, get them situated in the car? Um, it didn't take me that long. It's just, I'm, I'm usually quick, so, I mean, they were fastened and everything. Mr. Nick, I'm going to have you look at States Exhibit 25, 25 and ask you if you recognize that. And um, is that a, I'm not sure if you know what it is, but is, if I tell you it's a, uh, like a screenshot of a, some type of other photograph that was taken off another video, would that make sense to you? Okay. Judge, I'd ask that be um, admitted in display. Mr. Matthews? No objection. Okay, go ahead. And we were talking before, Ms. Napier, you were testifying about where your vehicle was parked and so forth. If I were to point to that vehicle right there, would that be where you were parked that day on July 19, 2015? Yes. And that's Rice Street as you're going. I think it's like a slight uphill, is that fair to say? Yes. And the car that's parked in back of you, was that there um, when you first came out of your mother-in-law's residence that afternoon? It wasn't there. So you got your kids situated, they're both in the proper car seat, and did you become aware of something unusual um, behind you or in your area? Um, I mean, I just thought it was just a regular traffic stop. Um, I thought it was nothing. And then, I mean, so he just, I mean, he just turned his lights on. I just, I mean, basically just thought it was nothing. Just a regular traffic stop, that's it. Um, did you sit in your car for a period of time, um, a short period of time after your kids were strapped in? I was, I was in my car for at least maybe like about three to five minutes. And then did you become aware something was happening behind you then? Yeah. Well, what, what, um, what did it look like to you when you um, noticed that? Just, I mean, it's a regular traffic stop. Okay. That's what I thought. Were your, um, if you recall, Ms. Napier, were, were your windows um, up or down? They were up. It was hot outside. So I had my car on. I had the AC on. So. Okay. And you said it was a, a routine traffic stop. Did you notice uh, another car, um, just a regular civilian car pulling behind you? Yes. And was there a police car behind that car yeah. then? Yes. And did that police car have on its um, lights? Yes. And did that draw your attention to that situation? Yes. If you could let the jury know, Ms. Napier, um, how, did, how did you observe or watch that situation as it unfolded? I mean, it was... Did you, what, what I mean to say is, did you turn around either this way or this way? Did you look at it in your mirrors, or how did you look at it? Um, at first, when he first pulled up or whatever, I had got, um, I was looking up at the and my rear mirror at first, and then I just start, when he got out of his car, that's when I seen, I was looking at my um, side mirror, him approaching um, Sam DeBose's car. So that you're talking about when you first 
look back, there was a mirror in which kind of mounted on the, in the interior that you would look back your main kind of mirror inside. Yes. And then you switch mirrors then? Mm -hmm. To which mirror? Is to my um, driver's side mirror. Which would have been, if you're the driver to your left, the my mirror left. that you would look at traffic behind you to your left? Yes. And what was the order in terms of how the cars were situated? Was it your car, what later turned out to be the Dubois car, mm -hmm. and then the police car behind that? Yes. That was the order? Yes. And you mentioned the name um, Sam Dubois. Did you know any, any of the people's names before this at all? No. Did you know Sam Dubois at all? No. Did you know any of his family that's seated here in the courtroom at all? No. Did you know Mr. Tensing or any of his family? No. Completely independent? Yeah. Just don't know. <laughs> and if you could just describe to the jury, Ms. Napier, in your own words, um, what you saw unfold as the officer approached uh, the vehicle. Well, when he um, approached his car, um, I just... I mean, from what I thought was a tr regular traffic stop, just turned out to be something different. I thought um, Ray Tenzing had got shot, which caused him to fall back. And then um, after the shot had happened, that's when I seen um, Dubose's car sped off. And that's when I had ducked down to the floor thinking it was a uh, like they were gonna shoot at each other or something like that and like while I was dug down I just heard like a whole bunch of like the acceleration of his car just going past my car and then I thought I heard another gunshot but after I heard his car go past my car I had got up and I just seen like the bumper and like smoke like somewhere like further up my car from my car and then, like, I had looked at my side mirror, the driver's side mirror, and I just seen when the, um, Bray Tenzing and a couple other cops had um, came and was running with their guns out and running past my car. And after they were further down the street, um, that's when I had turned my, you know, shift gears into drive, and I just, I just left the scene and I just went to my destination. I just want to go over some of what you said in uh, a little more detail. Yes. Did you say you saw um, who you now know to be um, Ray Tensing? Yes. And did that, was that individual dressed in a police uniform? Yes. And he's the one that came out of the police car? Yes. And where did, where did he go to? Did he go to the side of the, now that you know is the new Bose car? Yes. Judge, I'm not to leave. Where did Tensing go? Um, well, he went like when he got out of his car. He um, went to his went to Sam Dubose's driver's side. Um, Could you know, Miss Napier, how close Mr. Tensing got to Mr. Dubose's um, vehicle? Well, before the shot had happened, I mean, he was kind of like maybe this much close to his car, and. When he was, I guess, when I heard that shot, he was, I mean, he was, it's like he was reaching for his, his holster or something. And then no, I, Back here just a sec. Um, when Mr. Um, Tensing said he approached the car, got pretty close. Mm -hmm. And could you tell what they were doing at that point, Tensing and Dubose? Um, I guess they were having like a conversation on what was wrong or something. You, could you I hear didn't what was hear. Being said? No. I had my windows rolled up and my AC was on so there were it was impossible for me to pick up what they were saying or anything. Sure. Did it appear to you from watching it unfold that there was some type of conversation going on? <laughs> yes. And did it appear to you that the, the officer was writing writing something down? Yeah, I thought he was writing something down. And then you mentioned something to the jury a moment ago, uh, Ms. Napier, that you saw the Ray Tensing going for his gun. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that a little bit for me? Um, 
It just seemed like after they were having a conversation or something, um, I just seen them just um, Tenzin just going quick for his gun, and I thought it was it was too late, and I thought he got shot because um, when he was reaching for his, I guess his gun, he got real close to his car, and then that's when I thought it was too late for Tenzin, and I thought Tenzin had got shot, and after I heard the shot, Tenzin fell back, and then that's when I seen the car in motion, um, about to go past my car. Did you ever see initially, um, at, at the time of the first shot, um, Ray Tenzing with, with the gun in his hand at all? I didn't see, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't see the gun at, at all. At that point? Mm -mm. Did you ever see Ray Tenzing reach into the DeVos vehicle at all? No. You saw him, him appear to be going for a gun? Yes. But you never saw that? I never weapon. seen the gun, no. You heard a shot? Mm -hmm. At the time of the shot, had the Dubose car moved at all, Miss Napier? Um, at the sh well, like after the shot, that's when his car moved to the, you know, to the middle of the street, and then start going past my car. Had the Dubose car moved at all prior to the first it, shot? No. Are it you moved, certain about it, it? Yes, it moved after he. It moved after he shot. The you heard the shot. And that's when you saw the car move for the first time? Yes. 100% sure? Yes. And what happened to the officer then after the shot went off? After the shot went off, he flew back and was on the ground. And that's when the car moved? And that's when the car had moved. Okay. And what, what did you think, if you could let the jury know, when you heard that shot, what did you think had happened? I thought Ray Tenzing had got shot, and and then I thought Sam DeBose was getting away from, you know, from you know, what I thought. It was the which direction was the DuBose car going then when it moved, Miss Napier? Um, it was like I seen the front part of his his car going to the middle, and then going. You know, that's when I had my, ducked my head down when I seen his car go, you know, to the middle of the street, like the front part of his car going to the middle of the street. That's when I ducked down. And then I just heard acceleration. While I was ducked down, I heard acceleration on his car going past my car, and I thought I heard another, I thought I heard another gunshot. And then that's when I looked up and seen the bumper of um, Sam DuBose's car yeah, on the uh, ground. So the DuBose car would have been headed in the direction of the guardrail then? Yes, the yes. And tell the jury in your own words, Ms. Napier, what, um, you mentioned that at that point you saw Mr. Tensing and a couple other officers um, running past your car or coming up the street? Yes. And do you remember or recall if any of them had handguns or weapons in their hands? Yes. Did, um, you learned later to be Mr. Tensing have a handgun in his hand? Yes. Is that the first time you would have seen Mr. Tensing with a gun in his hand? Yes. And is that when you said you ducked down? Yes. Why did you duck down? I thought it was going to be like a, <clears throat> sorry, I thought it was going to um, maybe like some gunshots going, you know, hit my car or something like that. And I was trying to be on the safe side and my daughter was, you know, I was trying to be careful with them and make sure they were in their seat belts and make sure she didn't try to take her seat belt off or anything. And because she was trying to look, <clears throat> she was trying to look and everything. So, yeah, I was trying to be safe. And if you could relate to the jury again, Ms. Napier, um, you told them earlier that you thought you heard a second shot. Yes. What, at what point in time did you hear the, the second, what you thought was shot? Um, well, I thought they were shooting and, um, Was that at the time the vehicle? It was going past my car. Okay. And that's what you thought was um, the officers firing back? Yes. You related to the jury then, once the officers ran by you and the car was up there, um, what did you do? Um, after they were down the street, 
I had shift my car and drive and I just turned my car around and just left the street. And did you tell anybody, Miss Napier, what you had seen or witnessed? I had called um, my mother-in-law and told her what was going on, basically trying to, you know, make her aware of what, what had happened. And, you know. Did you contact the police right away? I did not. Oh. They um, contacted me later on that evening. What was your plan as far as um, why you didn't contact the police right away? I was scared. Um, didn't want to be involved. Um, but I knew at some point I had to um, be involved in some point. And you said the officers contacted you later that same day? Yes. And did you give a tape statement to Cincinnati Police Homicide later that night? Yes. Now, now since then, Ms. Napier, have you seen the, the video of the, the body-worn camera video? Yes. And how did you watch that? Well, I was on my phone and watched how everything had, what really had happened that day. And when I didn't see his gun, he already had his gun out pointing at um, Sam Dubose. And um, and I heard him saying, stop. Saying stop, stop, and then that's when fired the gun. That's him to both. And that kind of made me so emotional while watching that video. You gotta tell object at this point. And Ms. Ms. Napier, when, um, let me just ask you a couple questions about um, you told the jury a few moments ago that when you First witness the incident, you thought that um, Mr. Tutnet, you now know to be Mr. Tensing, mm -hmm. was writing something down. When you saw that video, did you have a different impression of exactly what he was doing? Yeah, it was a, uh, it, he had a gin bottle in his hand. I guess it was some type of, um, uh, I guess a freshener or something like that. Okay. But, but at the time, you thought he was writing something down. Yeah, I thought he was writing Now, after having seen the, the YouTube video, you realize it was a, a bottle that he was messing with up there? Yes. And as far as you telling the jury that you um, thought you heard a second shot, um, now, now that you've seen the video, have you um, revised that now that you saw the video? How, yeah. What you attribute that second loud noise to? Yeah, he hit the guardrail that time. And did you see any kind of evidence of that um, at the scene, Ms. Napier? Um, the bumper. So his car was on the, on the ground. Just one moment, Judge. Ms. Napier, how long did this entire incident last in your estimation? I would say maybe seven minutes, seven, eight minutes. Okay, you're saying, okay, let me get a little more specific here. From the time you saw the Bose pull up with the police car behind him, until the time he sped past your car. You're saying that took seven minutes? It had to take at least seven minutes. At least seven minutes? Yes. Okay. Um, you testified that your car was parked as it's depicted in that picture on the screen, correct? Yes. And you had been in your car for five minutes, you said, mm -hmm. when DuBose and Kenzing pulled in? Yes. And you indicated that you had your six-month-old son and three-year-old daughter with you, correct? Mm -hmm. You have to say yes or no. Yeah, yes, sorry. Um, and did you tell the police the night that you gave the statement that your daughter was not yet strapped in? She was, but then it's like she tried to take her seatbelt off, and I 
just had to, I mean, basically try to make sure she was safe. Well, when did she take her seatbelt off? That's when she was, when, um, like after the incident, the, the shot had happened. Okay, you, you indicated that your daughter, if I understand correctly, was in a, a booster seat. Mm -hmm. on the, in the rear seat on the passenger side, correct? Mm -hmm. And your son was behind. in a, I'm sorry? Yeah, he was behind me in the rear facing. But, and he was in some kind of... He was in the car seat. seat. Car seat, mm -hmm. okay. Um, he was strapped in. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing while you were... You said you were in the car for five minutes. Mm -hmm. What were you doing during that? I was basically trying to get myself together before I start, because I usually like, you know, just, you know, try to just get myself together, make sure I have everything. And the next thing, you know, like, what caught my attention, I was looking out and I just seen lights in the back of my, you know. You were looking out the rear view mirror in the middle of your windshield. Correct? Yes. Um, and that aroused your curiosity? Yes. And how long did you watch in your rearview mirror? Until um, Tenzing had got out of his car, then that's when I had looked on my side mirror. I will say I was looking at my rear mirror for maybe like five seconds, and then by the time he got out of his car, that's when I just kind of noticed him walking towards um, DuBose's car. Okay, now your, your windows are up and your air conditioner's on. Yes. So you can't hear anything can't outside? Hear. Mm -mm. What what are you, what were your kids doing at that point? Nothing. Just, just sitting <laughs> just there? Just sitting waiting. Okay. Um, so you switch from the, the middle rear view mirror to the side view mirror. Correct? Yes. And you're watching this whole thing through that. Yes. You saw Ray Tenzing approach Sam DeBose? Yes. DeBose's car? Yes. And all you can tell is that there was some conversation, correct? Mm -hmm. How long did that go? Maybe three minutes, five minutes. I three don't know. Minutes or five minutes? Yeah, I don't. I don't know ex the exact time. I'm just giving I mean, a guess. Could it have been guess. much shorter than that? I mean, it could have been, but I'm just giving what I'm thinking. It might be maybe three to five minutes. Okay, and you indicated in your initial statement that you saw Ray Tenzing writing something. Right. Yes. What did you see there? I mean, I just thought he had his pad or something and writing something down or something. And, and did you ever see the gym bottle? Did you ever see Sam DeBose hand something to Ray out the window? I didn't see that part. I just seen when Ray was holding, you know, I guess his pad or something in his hand, his writing pad or something. Now you testified that you, you watch YouTube videos and filled in some gaps here, correct? Yeah. How much how much did you fill in from the YouTube the YouTube video? Um basically like when I was watching it from what I thought when I thought uh DuBose had shot Tenzing Tenzing shot DuBose. You learned that from watching the video, correct? Yeah, and then from what I thought, when he had something in his hand, it was actually a, a gym bottle. And I thought he was writing something down from when I was in my car. And then I learned it was a gym bottle that he was holding. Did you ever see the gym bottle on the roof of the Honda? No, I didn't see it. Did you ever see Ray Tenzing reach into DeBose's car? Mm -hmm. Not when I, when I was in my car, I didn't. Did you ever, you saw that on the YouTube video? Yeah, on the YouTube video I saw when he was trying to like, well, when his gun, I mean, I just seen when he had his gun and was, you know. You didn't see the gun when you were looking through your rear view mirror? No, I didn't see Ray Tenzing with the gun. Did you see Officer Tenzing ever on the side, attached to the side of the car as it was moving? Um, no, he was already on the ground when, it, when the car was moving. Because after I heard the shot, that's when Ray Tenzing fell to the ground and the car was in motion. Did you see where he fell to the ground? Um, yeah, I saw where he fell. I mean, he fell at the part where, um, kind of across where he shot the bows. 
And then that's when the car was in motion after, you know, the shot was fired. Well, I don't know. I'm sorry. Did you see it? Are you familiar with the manhole cover on that screen? I don't know if you can see it here, but it's right up around here. There's a manhole cover, maybe right there, slightly behind where your car is parked. Oh. Are you familiar with that? Yes. Do you know where Ray Tenzing was in relation to that when you saw him fall? Um. No, because I was watching from my side. I can't really, like, tell if he fell in front of the old bus stop sign or... I mean, I just saw him fall, like, after the gun, after he, you know, the shot was fired. Did he fall right next to where Sam DeBose had initially stopped, or did he fall up the, or down the road a little far? It's like he fell where Sam DuBose was. Like, he just fell back after the shot, and then, like, he just fell back after and, and he was not you seeing this in your rear view mirror or is this you filling in the gaps of having watched the YouTube video no um I was watching from my side view mirror and seeing when he fell after the shot was fired and then the car was in motion after and you didn't hear squealing tires because your windows were up in air conditioning yeah I just I just went to the floor and just heard acceleration going past my car. You would agree with me that Mr. DeBose had to turn his car to the left to get around you without hitting you, correct? Yeah, or unless God was in that car and... Sorry? I said unless God was in that car. Okay. Um, and at what point did you, you said you went down on the floor? Yes. With your car? Where did you go exactly? Um, well, I was, I mean, it's me in my driver's seat, and I just, just went to the floor, like, just kind of, I was still in my chair, and seatbelt, everything, and I just kind of went to the floor, and just heard acceleration going past my car. Did you ever try to do something with your kids while you were doing that? Um, I was trying to, like, well, before took off or whatever I try to make sure my daughter was you know was, was together and everything and then that's when I just just went down and just heard it after you heard the first shot yeah and then I heard acceleration going past my car and, and while that's going on you're trying to you're doing something with your daughter trying to get her down make sure she's and you know how long would you estimate this whole process lasting here this part Judge, I'm not sure what part he's talking about. I'll, I'll clarify. From the point where you heard the gunshot, is it when, when you heard the gunshot, is that when you started to worry about your daughter? Mm -hmm. okay, how long from the time you heard the gunshot until the tires were, or until the car was accelerating past you? How much time elapsed in there? Say like. Five seconds, maybe five, six seconds. Extremely um, fast, correct? Yes. Did you ever see Ray Tenzing moving? In any manner with Sam DeBose's car? No, he was our, he, I mean, he was on the ground, so there was no possible, uh, there was no way I, he was attached to the car. There was, no, he wasn't attached to the car at all. How did he get on the ground? I mean, I guess from the, the power of the gun, maybe threw him back, make him, made him fall, and... You're totally guessing there, correct? Yes, I'm, yeah. And your testimony is that he fell on the ground right at the same point where Sam the boat Like right across, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you see him get up? I saw him get up. And I seen two other cops with him, with their guns out and running past my car. This was after I heard 
the acceleration go past my car after I seen the bumper, uh, Sandra Bose's bumper on the ground. And then that's when I seen uh, Ray Tensing um, with two other cops running with guns out past my car. Did you see that with your eyes or did you see that on this That's with my eyes. But that's with my eyes. Okay. Uh, pardon me. And then you decided, I'm getting out of here, right? Yes. And you were headed off to your parents' house? Yes. Uh, and when you, so you had, you had to make a U-turn, correct? Yes. Did you just do it right there from where you were parked? Yes. When you came back down Way Street, did you see, notice the gin bottle in the roadway? Uh, I don't remember seeing a gin bottle. Did you uh -huh. notice Ray Tenzing's flashlight in the roadway? Yes. You saw that? Mm-hmm. How did you avoid hitting it? I went around it. I mean, I know how to drive, but I mean, I went around it. And you saw mm -hmm. it and you went around it? Yes. And then you called your mother-in-law and told her what had happened or what you had seen? Yes. Basically trying to make her aware of what happened. And then the, the police contacted you, correct? Yes. And asked you to come in and give a statement? Yes. And that's what you did? Mm-hmm. Again, I'll ask you one more time. Are you able to estimate how long from the time you saw Tenzing approached DeBose's car until DeBose's car sped past you. How long did that take? Maybe uh, five minutes. <laughs> I have nothing further. Anything on the